go out of their way to boost the self-esteem of their personnel. If people believe in themselves, it's amazing what they can accomplish. Thank you very much. Call the 12th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Falk. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunas. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Renfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Smith. Excuse. Vanderweel. Here. Rehasselt. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. At this time we will do our pl the Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Ryan, would you lead us, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. President Hanny, I mean, Hannah, approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion second to approve minutes. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Con confirmation of appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I hereby submit the following appointments to the Business Improvement District for your consideration. Reappoint Alan Rudnick. Mary Mirande, Richard Grinke, and David Gass for new three-year terms to expire 9-10-2010, signed by the mayor. Can I ask for a motion to confirm? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. And then, per Charter Ordinance Number 4-0708, I hereby appoint William C. Balky, the City Engineer for the City of Sheboygan, respectfully submitted, Paul White Enders, Director of Planning and Development. That requires confirmation. Well. Ask for a motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Um, first on the list would be Joel Pfeiffer. If Mr. Pfeiffer could please come up to the podium. <coughs> and Mr. Pfeiffer, I will need your home address, please. Uh, my home address is uh, 617 East Capitol Drive, Heartland, Wisconsin. All right, sir, and you will have five minutes. Well, I'm extremely excited about being back in Sheboygan. Mr. You probably don't recognize me. Excuse me, Mr. Hartland, could you oh. pause it? Yeah, so that the TV audience can hear you. Let's start again. I'm a retired high school teacher, so I used to. <laughs> um, I lived in Sheboygan from uh, 72 to 77, and I taught art at, in uh, Howard's Grove. And uh, in 1976, at the art fair, which I show my own ceramic work, I traded for a doll named Emma. Emma is a retired checkout lady from the Piggly Wiggly store. And normally, you'd put a piece of art up, up on a shelf, but um, I decided to take her out with friends. So we took her out through out Sheboygan. And clearly, what happened, I consider it magic. Uh, we'd walk into a place, and in fact, uh, if I can point at you for a second, I'd, uh, you'd win the flip, and you'd bring Emma in. So what we would do is we would all go in five minutes earlier and just settle in, and then you'd walk in with Emma, and let's say if it's a place that had a drinking establishment, you'd order two drinks. And we'd watch what happened in the place, and everybody melted and people that weren't talking to each other started communicating and then everybody eventually came over. Well, after about a year of taking Emma out, my friend said, Joel, people are starting to talk about you. Don't you think it's time to get somebody for Emma? Well, I called the artist and did another trade for Woody. He's sitting back there. He's got a bad leg right now, so he's just resting. <laughs> he's a retired uh, bus driver. He has a three-year safe driving award. He is a Rotarian, and in fact, recently he has the Sheboygan pin on. 
Well, obviously, when you're going to marry somebody, I thought it'd be great to get them married. What do you do? You go get engagement pictures taken. I went to the Sheboygan Press, and Emma already had her wedding picture. And you can see on the front, this was actually from their wedding reception at the town and country club. Well, um, I went to have their pictures taken, and they said, no way. So they said, you're going to have to talk to the editor. I went up to the editor. I believe his name was Mr. Werner. And Emma and Woody were in a garbage bag because she had her wedding dress on. And he said, how can I help you? And I said, my friends uh, want to get married, and uh, they need their pictures taken. He said, that's down the hall to the left. And I said, no. Um, he said, where are these friends? So I pulled him out of the bag. He started chuckling, and he said, if you can talk anybody into this, we'll go along with you. So that's when I got permission from Mayor Susha to marry Emma and Woody at the water feature, which had just been finished. And he thought, what a great, great idea. It's called community unity to get people together. Then I put my hand on the mayor's shoulder, and I said, would you stand up in the wedding? Of course he didn't think I was serious, but he said, sure, anything that would change the name from Sin City to Community Unity, I support. Well, the next night I was on Channel 12 television in Milwaukee announcing that the mayor was standing up in the wedding. Well, what's coming up is on October 9th, it's Emma and Woody's 30th anniversary party. And already the excitement, uh, certainly they're excited and they're gonna renew their vows. The minister that married them is coming back. All the musicians that played, uh, Former Mayor Susha and Donna, they stood up in the wedding. All the tuxedos were donated. The wedding cake was donated. All the flowers were donated. The reception, I mean, it was one of those, it became a phenomena. Uh, they had a, a honeymoon in Door County. And because I'm a romantic and just a dreamer, I cashed in my teacher retirement and flew to Hollywood to stay at Marty Scorsese's house. Well, that's another long story. We don't have enough time, but um, what's happening is that we are celebrating their anniversary. All the people are coming back, and we're inviting the entire community, of course, of Sheboygan and beyond, to come and share the idea of community unity. We're going to do a visual presentation of everything that took place. Um, we're inviting the longest married couples in the area to come and renew their vows with Emma and Woody. And one of the most exciting aspects of this is um, an uh, Emmy Award winning filmmaker is coming to do a documentary on the whole celebration and also um, interviewing people that were there and obviously people that are experiencing it for the first time. So it's fun, it's a little bit crazy, but I think that's what we need in the world is something that's fun, lighthearted, and that's what Emma and Woody are all about. Um, that's how I met my wife, Mary. Uh, a friend said, you've got to invite my friend who lives in Madison. So I did. She came. We've been married 29 years. Um, also, some of you, maybe you have never heard of a clay stomp. Sir, been... your five minutes are up, but we really need the extra minute on this. <laughs> OK. Go for it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and does Emma get five minutes? Oh, minutes? no, just okay. you. Um, <laughs> Well, I started mixing my clay in the backyard in Sheboygan, and what happened after Emma and Woody uh, Community Unity, I started taking it out into the community. Maybe some of you have seen the Russian mural at uh, Mitchell International Airport. I have done murals um, with 37 countries around the world. I do them with schools, with art centers, uh, Ra West, um, libraries. And it's all about bringing community together and creating a work of art from basically it's transcending differences and having fun. So Emma and Woody, they kick that off for me and my two children and everything else. So I would love to see all of you there to share in the celebration on October 9th. So thank you for your time. Uh, we're really excited about being back in Sheboygan. And uh, what's amazing is that I'm meeting people I haven't seen in 30 years. My daughter was five and my son was three. Well, do the math, 35 and 33. So I walked into someone today and I go, no, it can't be you. So <laughs> thank you, sir. So thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you very much. Next on the list would be Henry Capitillo.
And Mr. Capitillo, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I suppose it's going to be a little hard passing after Emma and Woody, but I'll try to do the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, council members, before I start on the issue that I came here today, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Alderman Gisha and Alderman Hanna for their dedicated efforts to work with the Sheboygan Police Department staff to work out a process by which the department will add new needed patrol officers. I would also like to thank Alderman Bourne for his efforts to look at other avenues to generate additional revenue for the city of Sheboygan. One area that Alderman Bourne has identified for the potential is the numerous nonprofits within the city that do not pay property taxes, but are eligible to receive services through the city of Sheboygan, which are paid for by property taxpayers of Sheboygan. Home Inc. is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, just like numerous other nonprofits within the city of Sheboygan. But the difference is that we pay property taxes and we have paid approximately $36,196 since we secured the old Anna Rice St. Nicholas office building on Superior Avenue. I am sure that other nonprofits would be willing to pay a modest public protection and safety fee to offset some of the costs that the police and fire departments incur to provide services. By doing so, they can also be proud to say that they are not receiving services from the city that are, that are paid by the property taxpayers of Sheboygan. To get to the issue that I came to discuss, I would like the council to consider increasing the personnel assigned to the Sheboygan Drug Unit and Street Crime Unit. I ask this of the council because of the ever-increasing in drug-related crimes and increase of gang activity within the city of Sheboygan. To confirm this, all you have to do is read the Sheboygan Press and also look at the Department of Justice Preliminary Annual Uniform Crime Report from January to December of 2006. This is the September 11, 2007 newspaper. Headlines, Murder, Suicide, Nobody Knows Why. This is the September 14, 2007 newspaper, and it says five businesses burglarized in one night. Teens accused in school break-in are suspects in Wisconsin box fire. Man gets 30 years for selling cocaine. Woman charged with delivering cocaine. This is the September 5th Sheboygan Press. Three adults charged for allegedly chasing and attacking teenager. Sheboygan man charged with six offense struck driving. Illegal alien charged with alleged sexual assault. Also in the crime reports, through the Department of Justice for the Mid Midwest region, violent crime in 2006 rose by 2.1%. Murder increased by 0.02. Forcible rape, 0.3%. Robbery, 5.1%. Property crime, 0.1%. Burglaries, 4%. Larceny theft, 0.4%. Motor vehicle theft, 3.6%. Arson, 4.6%. These are statistics that any of you can look at, and I'll leave this with the uh, city clerk regarding, and I, I would encourage all council members to look at this, and also, um, I would also encourage the council members to read the 2006 Conference of Mayors Best Practices of Community Policing in Gang Intervention and Gang Violence that I provided to the City Clerk's Office during a previous presentation to the council. I provided the report on CD for your information. I would encourage all of you to look at this report and to see what other cities in all over the country that are doing regarding their 
gang violence, and also the special uh, community policing programs that are, that are taking place all over the country. Look at what other communities are doing to support community policing and their efforts. Do not wait for increased violent crimes related to drug and gang activity. I would also strongly encourage any council member that has not done a ride along with a patrol unit to do so. Excuse me, Henry, would you like your additional minutes? Yes. And the reason I say this is because I don't think you really know how much problems there are within the city when it comes to gang activity and drug activity unless it really touches you. I say that because we have problems in, 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 in our building. I see people coming in and a couple weeks later, I look at them and they're totally different people. And the reason is drugs, crack cocaine, is unbelievable how much there is in the city of Sheboygan here. I don't think you even can fathom how much drugs are in the city. And unless you really get to know this, you're not going to be able to make decisions on funding additional staff for the street crimes unit or the drug unit because you'll think, well, you know, I really don't think we have a problem. But I can guarantee you, you we definitely have a serious problem in the city of Sheboygan when it comes to drug activity. In closing, I would like to thank all the patrol officers and other personnel of the Sheboygan Police Department for keeping our city safe and for their dedication and professionalism. Excuse me, Henry, your minute is up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And last on our list would be Carter Paulus. Mr. Paulus, can you give me your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. My congratulations also go to Emma and Woody. It's heartwarming. My subject tonight is also weird in a way, or funny, believe it or not. This is in reply to a recent letter by someone that I like personally and have respected for as long as I've known him, Lee Montemeyer Jr. About the fire department assuming the ambulance service, which was published in the press last week, Wednesday. And my comment to it is unbelievable. He writes, quote, fully educated, experienced, and qualified firefighters slash paramedics are now in place without any extra cost for Sheboygan taxpayers, unquote. Unbelievable. They may be educated, but experienced? Fully experienced paramedics have to satisfy 1,500 hours of service in three areas totaling 500 hours apiece. Check it out. Unbelievable. The council, as published in Sunday's paper, said that it is discussing a total of seven and three quarter percent pay increases for firemen slash paramedics. Unbelievable. Does anybody know about compounded pay raises? That will be considerably more than seven and three quarter percent over three years in dollars and cents. Check it out. Of course, the new hires will have to live in the fourth highest taxed city in the country. Good luck. The city can't even find a new finance director to live here. Unbelievable. The council has given the fire chief permission to hire up to 54 more firemen slash paramedics. Unbelievable. First it was four more, then it went to eight, then it was 12 or 18, then 24, and now 54. Has everybody here lost his or her minds? 
unbelievable. The fire department is going to make a profit. Unbelievable. The taxpayers are truly getting it sucked to them again. They can't even afford to properly equip their ambulances. How about three or four heart monitors at 25 grand a piece? Unbelievable. They probably won't even be able to pull into the ER hospital entrances without pulling their mirrors in because they don't fit. The ambulances are too wide. Unbelievable. We just got rid of the wheel fee tax, then the rain fee tax, now comes the ambulance fee tax. That's how they're going to make a profit, with fees, a second tax to the taxpayers. And the mayor publicly states, as published in the press, that he's not hearing any complaints about higher taxes with three or four million budget increases being proposed for the future. This is to satisfy more waste in this out-of-control government. He was elected, and so were you, all of you, to lower taxes, not increase them. The taxpayers are being taken for such a ride it is truly unbelievable. Where, oh, where is our hero to clean up this disgraceful performance by our government and give back the Orange Cross Ambulance Service to Sheboygan? They are fully qualified, educated, experienced, and in place at no cost to the taxpayers of Sheboygan. Believe it or not. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> At this time, it is important for me to address, uh, this, uh, address some issues that have been brought up. The first thing that I'd like to point out that when people come and address the council, they do so and express their own personal opinions. Because someone says something doesn't necessarily make it so. And I'd like for the alderman to, to understand that, which I know you do. But the public needs to be aware of that. When people come up here and make comments or comment on issues that are going around, and a lot of times without the basic information that's necessary, uh, different conclusions are arrived at. The other thing I wanted to point out is that, and this is important for all of us to remember because we need to keep saying it, if people want their taxes lowered, we have done our share. We are proud of what we are doing to keep taxes low. They need, anybody that doesn't want taxes raised needs to go talk to the other taxing jurisdictions that tax everybody around here. That means that the Sheboygan Area School District is a taxing jurisdiction. That means that the Sheboygan County is a taxing jurisdiction. Lakeshore Technical College is a taxing jurisdiction. And the Recreation Department is a taxing jurisdiction. The city of Sheboygan taxes the people 33 cents out of a dollar, 33%. For that, I'll take the blame. I'm not going to take blame for the other remaining balance that the county, the school, LTC, and the recreation department in, in, uh, put on, on the taxpayer. That I will never, and I say it again, I will never take responsibility for that because I'm not the one doing that. If people need to go to these jurisdictions and tell them that. I appreciate the fact that they tell us that, but we are doing our job and we're very proud of that. Final thing, there is no ambulance fee. There is no ambulance tax. People are already paying a fee. They're just paying it somebody different. And the taxpayer, the way Alderman Boren and some of the aldermen have been concerned about the way it's being set up as a separate cost center, is not going to cost the taxpayer any money. And if it is, at some point, that, that money has to be borrowed, it will be paid back. There's enough aldermen here that are keeping a real close eye on that, and I think we're going to do a great job. And it, it just, it's, it's frustrating, and it's extremely disappointed to, to constantly hear this bashing of our fire department and Chief Lestusky and, and his team that, that worked so hard. We, they talk about 15 years of experience at, at Orange Cross. They have over 150 years of experience. 
in serving the people of, of Sheboygan. No one has ever questioned their loyalty. No one has ever questioned their commitment to the taxpayer. 150 years versus 15, folks, you don't need to do the math very hard. We have a completely dedicated uh, police, a fire department. It's going to do a remarkable job. We've been criticized before for making tough decisions. And we've proved people wrong. And folks, we're going to do it again. I have tremendous faith in our fire department. I have tremendous faith in all of you to make sure that we're good stewards for the taxpayers' dollars. And we are doing our share. And I thank you very much for that. Collection of the Board of Water Commissioners. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that uh, <clears throat> nominations be received from the floor and voting be done by open ballot. If more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Nominations? At this point, Mayor, I have received a nomination from uh, Gerald Vandercreek. Would you like to make that a nomination? I'll make that nomination. Second. There is a nomination from the floor. President Hanna, second by Vice President Bourne. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? There are none. Mr. Are Mayor, you? I'd move to cast a unanimous ballot for Gerald Vandercreek for the Board of Water Works Commissioners. Second. Motion and second to cast a unanimous ballot for Gerald Vandecree. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Vandecree. <laughs> Thank you very much, President Hanna. We will now go to hearings. There's two. Number one, to amend the zoning for property located at the southwest corner of Michigan Avenue and North 31st Street from Class SO, from Class Suburban Office to Class Mixed Residential 8 classification. The second hearing is, uh, it deals with uh, to amend the zoning for property located at 1235 Pennsylvania Avenue from Class Neighborhood Residential to Class Neighborhood Commercial Classification. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? There is one uh, objection that has been made to hearing number one, and this was done in the form of a written letter. I don't normally do this uh, to, to notice the objections because people are, should come over here and address the council uh, uh, personally. But this is from Ms. Matlin. She objects to the rezoning uh, of the, the number one issue there. Uh, she has some, uh, some concerns about the, the way it's, it's being uh, handled from her family side in court. And I am not going to read all the details, but there, please note that there is an objection to that particular uh, zoning change in hearing number one. I will ask again, are there any other people who want to address the council? There being none, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move to close the hearings. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Next item on the agenda is consent agenda 12-1 12, 12 to 1213. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that uh, all, our, all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Wangaman aye. and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Officers 2, 12, 14 by the, C by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning for property located at the south left corner of Michigan Avenue and North 31st Street from Class Suburban Office to Class Mixed Residential 8 classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the report of officers and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. 
Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleonis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1215 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning for property located at 1235 Pennsylvania Avenue from Class Neighborhood Residential to Class Neighborhood Commercial Classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Vanderweel, Aye. Verhassel, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Bourne, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Gisha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1216 through 1222 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1223 and 1224 lies over. 1225 and 12 th through 1230 to be referred. Report of committees 7, 1231 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7584 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the licensed activity. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I uh, move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Is uh, Joseph uh, Mazuski here tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Very well. Please proceed. Uh, we, uh, the committee, uh, voted unanimously to uh, deny this uh, uh, license. Uh, the gentleman appeared before the committee and. Uh, he is he is working as a as a bartender, and we encouraged him that after a year of staying out of trouble, uh, he's welcome to come back to the committee and, and reapply. But at this time, because of some recent convictions that are related to the uh, activity, we uh, voted to deny. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Any further discussion? <coughs> there is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Cleonis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor. Rinfleisch, Ryan, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangeman, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1232 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab operators license number 67, 6700 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second, under discussion. Uh, is Forrest Belanger here tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Very well, please proceed. Uh, we attempted to contact Mr. Belanger twice, once by certified letter. Apparently, uh, Mr. Belanger is no longer at the address of record in the clerk's office. We made every attempt to contact him, and uh, he did not appear. We were unable to contact him after several efforts. So. Uh, it was unanimous, unanimous decision at this time to deny his taxi cab operator's license. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Kleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1233 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7590 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee, the applicant's ineligi ineligibility for a license given the record of violations related to the licensed activity and status as a repeat law violator. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Is Florinda Perez here tonight, please? She's not here, Your Honor. Very well, please proceed. Uh, 
the committee uh, decided uh, to uh, deny the renewal of her beverage, bev beverage operator's license uh, based on the several reasons that you previously stated. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any other discussion? There is none. Alderman Ryan. Uh, just for clarification, Your Honor, is this her personal beverage operator's license or is this the establishment license? Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. This is her uh, personal beverage operator's license. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. No. Vanderweel. For Hasselt. Wonkeman. Boren. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Heidemann. And Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10, 1234, lies over. Matters laid over 11, 1043. Resolution number 890708 by Alderman Meyer authorizing the submission of an application for financial assistance to the Sheboygan County Non-Motorized Transportation Pilot Program. Alderman Meyer. Oh, I came, where are you? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. <laughs> Alderman Wag Wagaman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I've received several phone calls and quite a bit of information from other people in opposition to the basically the pedestrian bridge across the river. The uh, feel it is going to benefit too far few people. Uh, it's hard to explain some, but to somebody living out in my district how this bridge is going to uh, help them. So uh, on this item, I, going by what my constituents tell me, I, I would have to uh, bend to their wishes and vote no on this document. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wildman. Alderman Clayness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I support the resolution at this point to get it on the table for discussion with the county as to the other projects that they're considering at this point. Um, if it becomes a responsibility of the city, I'm not sure I would support it. I would hope that the county would take it on as a project and as their responsibility to maintain, or that we would find some private donor who would name the bridge and take care of its maintenance in perpetuity. Uh, because I think the city has enough infrastructure to maintain and in fact is having trouble maintaining some infrastructure. So I just push the idea for that sake. Thank you, Alderman Clayness. Next we have Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll be voting against this uh, motion resolution and my desire is that those dollars available be more productively used in other areas and other means of uh, providing secure and safe uh, transportation passageways for both pedestrians and uh, bicyclists. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manny. One more. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I am, uh, well, I respect my colleagues here. I am definitely behind the, the pedestrian bridge uh, being in second, the second district, uh, Alderman Balkan myself, but um, the, the non-motorized transportation fund is designed to get people out of their cars. And people are saying, well, this bridge, you know, it's, uh, it should be used for bicycle trails. In my opinion, I have a bicycle. Unfortunately, it's eight years old and still has the nubs on the tires. That's how much I've used it. Um, but to spend all of this non-motorized transportation fund on bicycle trails, I think is an injustice. It's great for the people that ride bikes. Are you going to get that many more people out on bicycles by building bicycle trails? I think a good portion of it should be used for that. However, this pedestrian bridge, will it get people out of their cars? If you're out on South Pier and you want to go on the other side of the river, I guarantee you nobody walks right now. They get in their car and they drive to the other side of the river. And vice versa, if they are on the, on the, the uh, older side of the river, they get in their car and drive around. Nobody walks all the way around. If the bridge is there, people walk across the bridge, then they're on foot. You have people out in South Pier walk across their bridge, their car is out on South Pier, they're on foot for the afternoon. They're out of their cars. That's supposed to be the purpose of the non-motorized transportation fund. Not to mention the economic benefits of it to the entire uh, South Pier district. That has nothing to do with the non-motorized non -motorized transportation fund. But 
to get people out of their cars and doing something else, this will do it much more than anything else. Myself, I'll walk my children down, pull them in the wagon down to the, to the, uh, to the uh, riverfront, but I never bring them on the other side because I'm not walking that far. But I'll, you know, I, we'll go to the other side to the triple play or to the, the water park. We'll take the car. Now, if the bridge is there, we're walking. This is what will get people walking. That's the answer to the, that's the purpose of the non-motorized transportation fund. Uh, as far as the city taking a, an approach of, we're not going to spend a penny on this. This is going to benefit our city. Now, to have possibly the entire thing funded by non-city taxpaying dollars and to maybe get caught up with a little bit of maintenance over the years to have a $5 million bridge across our river, I think is foolishness. So I'm 100% behind this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Next, we have Vice President Borden. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to support this tonight uh, with the caveat that I, I'm going to need more information as far as what the maintenance costs are going to be. Uh, I, like Alderman Wangaman, have not heard a lot of positives on this bridge idea for my constituents, but after I, I take the time to explain the benefits, I think they're a little more understanding. I haven't changed everybody's mind, but I want to move this forward to see if it's a possibility to get the dollars. I am going to be attending a presentation this Friday morning down at Blue Harbor that's put on by the Sheboygan uh, Bid District, and their topic is going to be covering uh, uh, this pedestrian bridge. And uh, it's, I, I think it's going to be very interesting, and hopefully I'm going to get some answers on, on the maintenance issue. Uh, so I, I am going to move it forward, but I am concerned about the maintenance, what that's going to be. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, like the senior aldermen from District 2, have heard a lot from our constituents about how they, uh, they support it. They, they, uh, they, too, will put their kids in their wagon and go down there. But more especially, I've heard from the business constituents that own along the, uh, uh, the shanties there saying, we want people that are over at Blue Harbor to walk over to our place and drink and eat in our places. So I'm going to support this tonight, but I also support all of the conversation that needs to be had. Uh, I, too, am going to the bid district meeting Friday morning. I know that later on in our packet, there's someone who has written a letter encouraging us to have a full and open uh, conversation on this, and I think that's great. We do need to understand what the economic impact could be and what the uh, economic, uh, the, you know, the, the maintenance fees and such uh, should be. So I'll be supporting this tonight to get the conversation started with the uh, caveat that we all need to learn more, and I think the facts are, are going to be on our side, and I think this will be a good thing for the city. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Alderman Bulk. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bulk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. And Clionis. Aye. Twelve eyes, three noes. Motion carries. Eleven thirty-one. Resolution number ninety-nine zero seven zero eight by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Bout, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of, of appropriations in the two thousand seven budget. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. My question is, on the resolution, it states that the library board has exclusive control of the expenditures of all monies collected, donated, or appropriated for the library fund. If that's true, why are we voting to authorize this tonight? If anybody could answer that. You want to go? <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Vanderwil. Well, that's that's a, a very good question. The, the city, the Sheboygan Code and statute that, that regulates a library says, I believe word for word what you just read, that the library board has, auth has complete authorization and control over those funds. In the past, uh, they have been brought to the library sim simply as, as a formality. As a, uh, they've been to the finance committee as a, simply as a formality. Uh, there's been some concern that perhaps that it's been so, so informal, yet a formality being so informal, if you can get that, uh, that perhaps some of the aldermen at the finance committee should be able to hash it out and, and sort through those expenses before those expenses are made. 
And it's it's just a, a matter of being able to have some some discussion on that. Alderman Gisha, you want to add something to Thank that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, it, and the result of just what you described was finding out through various meetings that the expenses the library board has authorized actually saves over twenty thousand dollars a year in library operations. Those are that's information we we've never really received in the past, and it's nice to be able to tout good fiscal responsibility on the library board's part and for us to better understand what their plans are for the future and any sort of trailing expenses and any additional expenses they do. Uh, the result of that is we're proud to say that this is a, a savings of 20 grand and uh, it is the full responsibility and authority of the library board to expend these funds. Uh, it's a check and balance for the city because we actually have these accounts. Uh, so I think uh, overall this change uh, that uh, Alderman Hanna suggested is working quite well. Thank you, Alderman Fischer. Uh, Vice President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've learned a lot in the last year in, in working with the library board. Um, they do have robust powers to spend those funds. I think I'm, I'm very encouraged by the renewed level of communication from the city and from the library back and forth. Uh, we're meeting on a regular basis. Uh, this is kind of an end product of those meetings that we, we are a check and balance. Uh, those, those funds are domiciled with us, and so it's kind of our obligation to keep an eye on that. But I think communication is going great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, I'll be right with you, Alderman, my Alderman Vanderhoel. The other point that has been made is that there are times when the library board uh, uh, votes to spend money that's donated. But, say for example, it's a water fountain, which we don't want to hear too much about water fountain, but if it's a water fountain that they were to spend money on, the money would come out, out from the donation funds, but the maintenance perhaps would not. That would have to be run through our, our portion, their portion that comes out from our levy. That's why it's another good reason to make sure that the Finance Committee has the ability to look at these expenditures, expenditures to say, okay, you, you've been able to fund this, that's great, Is, and by the same token with the bridge, are there any uh, tailing expenditures that are going to be associated with this in next year, following year, and for how long? So it, it's a good, again, check and balance, making sure that although they have that power to spend that, then that creates a, a, a burden, a liability on our part, or it may not. Okay? Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't have anything to add to the explanation for Alderman um, Vanderweel. However, I do want to add a couple of words with Alderman Buck's thoughts, because some of this is double the service. They're getting double the service for half the cost. They're being very careful. And when that was brought up at, the, at one of the last meetings of the library board, everyone was very happy to hear double the service at half the cost for the particular thing we were voting on that day. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Yesha? Aye. Is it that one? Hannah? Aye. Heidemann, Kittleson, Clayunis, and Manny. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1132, resolution number 100708 by Alderman Hanna, Bourne, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriation in, in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, move that the resolution put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1133, resolution number 101708 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Kittleson, Ryan, and Smith. Pursuant to 118-164 of the Municipal Code, directing the Chief of Police and Directors of Engineering and Public Works to cause lines or marks to be placed 
within the parking lanes of, a, of specified city streets within a business district to designate parking spaces of said streets. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I would also like to take uh, the general ordinance with that 1141. Please do. And I will make a motion to put the resolution and the general ordinance upon their passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this is a product of a communication that was sent to Public Protection and Safety by uh, Ziggy's Bar and Grill. They're uh, on Indiana Avenue and basically looking for relief for uh, the overcrowded parking in that area. And there's just not a whole lot we can do down there, and this is the best best solution we could come with putting putting the lines on the streets. <clears throat> and I'd like to add that if uh, the vehicle is Cross the line that we put on the streets, it's a $25 fine. So that's in there also. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Any further discussion? Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Are there going to be um, parking meters added? There's a parking meter mentioned in 1141. Alderman, Va Alderman Ryan? Uh, no, basically, that, that is why this is a, a, a change in the ordinance. Um, the change in the code. Uh, the code was written that in order to do parking lines, you had to have parking meters. So that's why our downtown has parking lines and parking meters. Indiana Avenue is in such a crunch right now with the developing of the area uh, that there are no lines on the road. Therefore, you know, uh, everybody's guilty of it. You take a lot of space in front of your car and behind your car to make sure you got plenty of room to get in and out. Purpose of the lines is just to get people, you know, to be able to compact more cars into that. Uh, that area and we have to have a change in the code in order to do it. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. <clears throat> Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 1134, resolution number 1020708 by Alderman Rehasselt, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, accepting the memorandum of agreement with the City of Sheboygan and Local 483 IAFF. Alderman Rehasselt. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion. I would just, as everyone was aware of last meeting, on behalf of my taxpayers in the district and on the in the city, I'd respectfully request that this council turn down this tentative agreement with the local fire union, and for a number of reasons. The reasons I'd like to state are, one, it falls short of the initial intention of it, which is to get full-time residency for our city employees, i.e. fire, police, and so on. Uh, we went in, Jim Bourne, authoring the resolution, was looking at lifetime residency, which for a fire department employee is approximately 25 years, give or take. Instead, our city bargaining team offered 10. We negotiated five. So I think we fell far short on that. Number one, or number two, I think um, it was never, the thing, one thing that bothers me, it was never presented as a cost during our discussions on this ambulance service back in May and June, not even as a footnote that there would be some cost incurred. Uh, we have a procedure called, called closed meeting, which we could have easily went into and discussed this number of 50, 60, $70,000, and I think that would have been a wise tool to use at that point. Number three, I think, in my opinion, I think the city's bargaining team lacked the real objectivity that the taxpayers want and need. And by that, I mean our th three members of our bargaining team, two of the members are fire department employees. So to put that in perspective for those watching at home, we've got two individuals who were sent into war to fight, negotiate on the taxpayer's behalf, and then the next day they have to go work alongside these people. We put those two people in a very tough position to bargain on the city's behalf, and I think something should be looked at in the future to clean that up a little bit so that we can have true objectivity in our bargaining team. Um, I'd like to say that this cost, and the large part of this that I have a problem with is the, the pay increase that we're offering to our firemen. And I'd like to say that's a unnecessary cost for our taxpayers, but nobody in this room and nobody on my salary and grievance committee has the information to say that we're paying our people more, or less, or too much than the comparables around the state of Wisconsin. We needed then, and we need it still today, we need an aggregate number of either total salary compensation for a new employee or a, a wage benefit combination. But that's what an arbitrator is going to be looking at 
when they go into discussion, not whether we offer a 1% increase, a 4% increase, as compared to La Crosse, Eau Claire, and Wausau offering their 4% increase. So we need a, an aggregate number that we still do not have at this point. Um, like I said, I'd like to say it's a bad number, but we don't have the information to say, so maybe they deserve more, maybe less, but that's my piece on it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Verhassel. Uh, before we go on, just want to point out, we can hear this howling of the wind, and it may be interfering with the people, the reception that, that are watching this meeting. And they have asked that Alderman speak a little louder and clearer into their microphone, okay? Next we have Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, on behalf of the citizens of the first district who are tax adverse, I support this. Uh, and I support it because not doing it will cost the city money. I've offered to share the numbers, and a couple of aldermen have taken me up on it. All you need to do is to go and read arbitration reports. Maybe I have no life, so I read arbitration reports uh, on the internet for the state of Wisconsin and read all the 50 of the 54 cities in the state of Wisconsin that have this service. You can read exactly what the arbitrator rules when it comes to uh, differential pay for ambulance drivers or ambulance personnel. It's very simple. Uh, there's a laundry list of things they can get. And I, uh, I took serious issue with the Sheboygan Press editorial of Friday. Serious issue, because in my opinion, it was incredibly inaccurate. They did not mention anything below the line in this agreement that we got that has dollar signs attached to it. What we're talking about here is $55,000 for 26 paramedic firemen over, over the length of this contract. $55,000 by the end of the contract. Nowhere is it mentioned that they're going to give back $6,000 a year to allow Commander Butler as a fill-in for the paramedics. The union has allowed that. Nowhere does it mention that they're going to relinquish EMS pay. Right now, our firemen receive EMS pay to the tune of about over $10,000 a year. They could have that paramedic premium of 6%, all of it, beginning 07. They're not even doing that. They're giving that back to the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. You add all the numbers together, which is not that difficult to do, and you come up with the taxpayers of the first district, second district, all the way through this room, of to the good of $14,000. Now, that's being a friend to your taxpayer. Uh, secondly, the, uh, it, it's been stated that we don't have information showing whether our firemen are starting off low or starting off too high. The information was presented in the committee I was in and backed up in writing by the chief of police this week. Exactly what he said, backed up by our HR director, Gephardt, was put in writing and confirmed. So I don't get the argument. Um, falls short of the resolution, that it does. Unfortunately, the resolution isn't passed. We, it's a resolution. It's up for discussion. It's, a, it's, it's great that it was brought up, but it's not law on the city of Sheboygan. It's just a resolution making its way through the process. We can't make pretend that it's a statute in the city of Sheboygan. It's not. So you're getting it before the statute. And I think the spirit of the statute requires some interesting and aggressive conversation. There's pros and cons to residency. It's going to cost us money if we want it. We have to understand that. But it's not a statute in the, st in the city of Sheboygan. So we can't keep referring to it as if it's codified. It's not. So I thank the bargaining unit for saving the city $14,000 based on these, uh, these negotiations. I thank them for giving us the comparables in writing that they verbalized in the meeting. And uh, I thank them for, uh, for not telegraphing in the ambulance proposal a 6% paramedic premium. I'll close with something that's always bothered me in the city. If you're building a, a shelter house, you put a price on the shelter house, and then you go out and get bids for it, 300,000 bucks. Oddly enough, the shelter house comes in at $300,000. It's, it's, it's remarkable. So what do we do in this case? Wisely, thanks to Commander Herman, who was on the other side of the table for many, many years fighting the city of Sheboygan, they didn't put it in for strategic reasons. It would have been telegraphing that we're going to give you 6% in part of this deal. And guess what? We would have paid the 6% uh, beginning 2007. We would not have saved the $14,000 to the life of our current codified contract with the fire department union. It would have been giving a gift right up front with no negotiation power. This gave them negotiation power to save these other items. And I thank them for that wisdom. I never would have thought of it. And uh, 
I, I thank them for their service, and I, and I certainly support this for the taxpayers of the first district. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Ryan, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I do also support this. Uh, I wish I had the numbers that Alderman Gisha has right now. Um, but taking the, 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 the uh, tax savings out of it, putting that aside, and just operating off of the, the, the principle of this, the fire department has, has put this forward um, in order to expedite the entire ambulance issue. Um, if I believe if, uh, if the numbers I have in my head are correct, there is no uh, ambulance premium pay. There's a 0% increase for the first year. Um, they could have gotten 6%. If they go to arbitration, they probably get 6%. I mean, they put this forward um, to, try to try to expedite the process to get the thing rolling. If they're gonna, if they're gonna take over the ambulance service, which uh, this council approved, um, they need to know where they stand. So this, you know, the thing about this is this is this is a union negotiated issue. It's nothing that you go back to them and say, well, we appreciate it. And the five year residency thing would not even be an issue in the negotiations. They threw that out as a bone to the city. To go back and say, well, we want to rework this thing. It's not going to be reworked. It'll end up in arbitration. So I think this council has a duty to take something that Ed Surik and his team put together and, uh, and approve it for the taxpayers as you like. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. We have Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple of mild points. One, I, I appreciate the fact that Alderman Gisha doesn't have a life because that allows him to spend so much time in the numbers and the statutes. You were very uh, articulate in your explanation. Um, and that is something that I just wish the editors at the uh, Fourth Estate here in Sheboygan, at the Sheboygan Press, would have had more conversations with more aldermen before printing this piece of near libel as their editorial last week. The word something devilish about the negotiations, casting all kinds of aspersions on the negotiation process, and quid pro quo, quo amounts nearly to uh, uh, an accusation that the people involved in this process got something for what we gave. So uh, I, I don't know who had the conversation with the editorial board that, that led to this very misleading editorial, but it led to one gentleman tonight speaking before our council with completely inappropriate facts. It may have led Alderman uh, Verhasselt down uh, the wrong path. So I, I guess why I stood up is because I'm just really disappointed in the Sheboygan Press for what I think is, is a lack of journalistic principles in the execution of this editorial. And secondly, to have just a mild disagreement with uh, um, Alderman Ryan. I don't think they threw it in as a bone to the city. I think they threw it in as part of a complete package. Nobody throws bones. Everybody is in it for what's in it for them. Everybody negotiates as much as they can get. And they threw that residency in there as part of a total package, which he's exactly right, to accelerate this process uh, so we could get them uh, in there. So I don't want it to sound like they threw it in there as a gesture of goodwill. It was part of a good deal that they, or it was part of a complete deal that they thought needed to be negotiated as was. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ellen Balk. Any further? Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to vote against this tonight, and I'm going to vote against, against it because of what I said last week, is that I thought it was most inappropriate for our, our Human Resources Director to even negotiate this residency, this residency uh, resolution that I had because of the fact at the meeting that I attended of salary and grievances, he was told to talk to all of the unions, not negotiate, open up any negotiations, but to bring this resolution to the attention of all of the unions to see what the reaction was and then bring it back to salary and grievances. I get a phone call after this deal is, uh, is done and nowhere in this resolution does it say anywhere about 10 years, five years, three years, it says new hires will live in the city as long as they're employees. And I just think it's totally inappropriate for him, without authority, to even bring this up in the negotiations. And I think many parts of this editorial are right on. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. We have Alderman Rehassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I don't think the editorial was that far off, having been in the eye of the storm here for the last month and a half and seeing all the players involved. Um, I do take offense to someone implying that I'm on the, not even implying, stating that I'm on the wrong path. That's an insult in its purest form. Uh, 
I do want to point out to this council that we have the option of going back to the table. This is not a throw it away or take it sort of deal. I, I spent probably better part of two hours on the phone with Jim Scott, our labor attorney, and went over all the possible scenarios that could roll out of this to get the best understanding as to uh, how this thing could work. And we have the option to go back to the table, both sides of the city and the union, put their final, they call it the final draft, on the table and lay it side by side and hopefully we're not too far off and we can work something out. If then we don't, then we go to arbitration. And for, you know, and I, and I, I keep hearing people say this is a great deal. I wonder sometimes who's representing who because I keep hearing they can do this, they can do that, they have the power to do this. It's an us, us, us thing. The city's working with the union, the union's working with the city. We both have our leverage on both sides and I want to hear people talk in that vein rather than talking constantly in the vein that they have the power to go back to arbitration and get six, maybe eight, maybe more, maybe less. We don't have a comparable. Again, we don't have a salary comparable. I hear someone say, well, we have a comparable. In my salary and grievance meeting back in August, I specifically asked Chief Lestusky for a comparable. And at that point, he provided me with some papers. And I want to say there were probably 15 to 25 different cities. And it had comparable data on everything from soup to nuts. The closest thing that it had, though, as it related to the issue at hand, which is salary, was percent increase. Kakana, all these little towns in, in larger cities, what percent increase they paid when they went to an ambulance service. I shared that information with our labor attorney, and he said that's a meaningless number. That's a meaningless comparable because the arbitrator wants to know what the total compensation package is, and that's how he's going to make his decision. Um, and that's a number we don't have. If we do have that number, I would challenge anybody to put it on my desk right now. I would love to see that figure. And I'm not saying we're right on base because I don't know that number and, and no one else here does. Um, as far as telegraphing our pay increase, we have closed meetings. We can do that. They're intended to be used in situations where we have union negotiations that might be parts of union negotiations, negotiations that need to be discussed. We could have easily had it at that point. <clears throat> excuse me, or a range could have been discussed at some point to avoid telegraphing an exact number. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Russell. And we, I am going to hold it to two times per, per alderman. We have uh, Mr. Surik, you wanted to make a point, sir? Mr. Surik is the department head of HR. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I have right here comparables. I think I think you might have received them, Dan. And it, basically, it shows that um, <clears throat> supporting firefighters' starting salary is thirty-two six thirty, which is the lowest of the groups. And here's here's some of the comparables: with Appleton, Beloit, Eau Claire, Fond du Lac, Janesville, Kenosha, La Crosse, Manitowoc, Nina, Menasha, Oshkosh, and Racine. I think those are pretty comparable cities. Um, and as far as top pay, this is this is firefighter pay. Not paramedic pay. We're somewhere in the middle. We're not, we're not high. We're not low. If we were the average amount, we'd, we'd be probably right in the median. As far as paramedic pay, Beloit pays currently four to ten percent. Eau Claire is five percent. Fond du Lac's five point nine percent. Janesville ranges from eight to ten percent. Kenosha ranges six percent. Manitowoc is seven. Uh, Oshkosh for some reason is three point two, and Racine is six percent. Uh, I'd also like to clarify something too. With Jim Scott is a labor attorney which we use, we've used, I've known Jim for a number of years, and he's with Linda and Marsek in, out of Milwaukee. And you refer to a conversation you had with him, and I talked to Jim, and Jim said that was not accurate. He, uh, he said that to look at comparables, he said he, he said he had mentioned that it could be, a, uh, could be an argument you could use in arbitration, but it wouldn't get you very far. He felt that the agreement we did reach with the firefighter union was an excellent agreement, and that for them to come by the first year with a 0% increase, come by with the third, second year with a 3% increase, and by the third year going with another 3% raise, he said it was fantastic. So uh, that's the conversation I had with Mr. Scott. And, you know, if, if the committee would like to have Mr. Scott come in and, and discuss that, I'd be, I'm sure he'd be willing to do that. So anybody have any questions? No, I think they're still debating. Thank you, Mr. Sir. We have Alderman Bout, second time, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, if, if saying that I think you're headed down the wrong path is a, an attack, I withdraw my very vicious uh, personal rhetorical attack on the uh, good alderman for Hassel. 
Alderman Ryan, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I wish I could uh, toss out my uh, uh, ethics and uh, uh, conscience and actually vote against this just to see what would happen with the union negotiations coming up. Um, it's a good deal. It was done in good faith. It's not going to get any better. And, uh, you know, to, to trash it, you're starting over is what's happening. I mean, you don't take these things back and massage them and improve them. It's thumbs up or thumbs down. If this council votes thumbs down, I think the, uh, the next time the, the deal is not going to probably be so sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Gisha, second time. Thank you. Uh, just a quick statement. And I, I get really disturbed with, uh, with having difficulties with city employees. I have difficulties with the system, not with the individuals who make up our system. It's not their fault that our statutes are set up a certain way, our wages are set up a certain way, the world is a certain way. So I, I appreciate comments regarding personal attacks, and I, and I feel that there were a few comments that were, were personal attacks that may have gone just a bit too far tonight, and I regret that, that that has happened in this chamber without burden of proof. So at this time, I call the question. There's a motion and a second to call the question. Any discussion? Discussion on calling the question. And this requires three quarters vote because what the question, the calling the question does is ends debate. And it's a very drastic step that's taken. Two thirds? Two thirds. Is there any discussion on that? There is none. Please call the roll. We need two thirds. Mm -hmm. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? No. For Hasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warren? No. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? No. Ten ayes, five noes. It's not, uh, not two thirds, twelve, is it? Two thirds would be eleven. Okay. Discussion continues. Is there anyone, well, um, some of you may, may be, is there anyone that would like to continue to discuss the issue? Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I voted no simply because all the heavy hitters were talking, I didn't get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make, a, to make one comment that uh, arbitration was brought up and kicked around and it, it almost seemed like some would like to see us go into arbitration. And I've been here long enough to see and to know that it's common sense that we don't want to go into arbitration. Because arbitration, if we go into arbitration, <coughs> the city will get the worst deal and the taxpayers will get the worst deal. So like Alderman Ryan said, I think we got the best deal we can get. Thank you. Okay. I would like to make a comment because I know that we went to, uh, we had an event at the, with the radio station from Milwaukee and Alderman Bauk said, we, at the council, we need to loosen up a little bit, or a, a lot more, I believe was his comment. And, and uh, Alderman Gish is right, sometimes things get a little going in different directions and, and perhaps we, we, uh, we um, gather information and translate it a little bit different. But I, I know that I can speak for myself, I certainly can't speak for, for all of you, but I have worked very hard to take the issues as an issue and not a personal thing against anyone. I've learned to let things go. I've learned to say, that didn't go my way. Okay, that's fine. By the way, it happens at home too. Doesn't go in my way all the time too. But you know, it didn't go my way. We move on to the next issue. And Alderman, we will have buckets and buckets full of issues that we are going to have to deal with that there's going to be either all one-sided or all this-sided or crossover amongst all of you. It's just the way these issues are. Some of these issues get sensitive and emotional. It's okay. Uh, all of you are, in my opinion, my humble opinion, extremely committed and dedicated and intelligent. You bring an incredible amount of talent to this council. And this is why we have these good, hearty discussions. Uh, but that's all they should be. And then once we vote and make a decision, let's go on to the next one. We have a little bit more discussion here. Alderman, President Hanna, you're next, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and first, thanks to Ed Zurich, a 
quickly providing us with these comparables. It was my understanding that the, the firemen were paid at about the mean for the state. Um, I've also talked to the city's labor attorney, and he's told me that he thinks this is an excellent offer on the part of the union. Um, so I think, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. I've, I've lived through labor discussions as I was on the school board with you for six years, and we know how contentious they can be, um, and the odds are stacked horribly against us in arbitration. Good point, Alderman. President Hannah. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I managed to not say anything for the first hour and 15 minutes, so I apologize that I actually finally had to say something. Um, I've been tossing this one around all week on deciding which way I'm going to vote on this one. Um, I think history, why they came to us and why they negotiated this prior to having the full discussion on the residency requirement that uh, we were hoping to have is because we've given them this task to run the ambulance service starting January 1st. Uh, and this is, is the, the big step in getting that process continuing on its way. So I actually want to thank the firefighters for um, coming forward to us and I think giving us a fair deal of that and that we can stay out of, of arbitration. Um, I do have some concerns about the agreement itself, though, and I will be voting for the agreement, but my concerns are, one, the residency requirement, um, which I did have some email conversations with the chief regarding. Um, I, I, I ultimately, I don't think that we can really force the issue with residency on um, employees of all kinds. Um, you know, do, can we get the finest and, and the best um, by doing so? Um, I, I understand as a taxpayer, I would want all my, my people to live within the city, so they're paying the same taxes that I'm paying. And when they negotiate, they're negotiating because they understand they're going to pay part, a portion of that salary as well. Um, so I, I, I think it's a good idea, but I don't think it's something that we're going to be able to negotiate with the unions down the road. But again, that's a discussion I would have rather had had we been able to bring up resolution, Alderman Boren's resolution uh, earlier and had that discussion, which we're not able to do. Um, I would rather see, quite frankly, it's the overtime pay the fact that we're paying them from the moment that they leave their residency. Uh, so we're, right now we're rewarding the firefighters to live as far away as possible. So when they do get called in on an assignment, they now have to, hey, if I can live in Plymouth or Fond du Lac, I'm getting overtime time and a half. I don't even have to do anything yet. Um, now, I, I, that's where I'd rather see, instead of a residency per negotiation perhaps, is for those that do get paid overtime, um, do it from when they re arrive uh, on station, on location. And there's probably problems with that. You know, do they go directly to the station or do they go directly to the scene of, of the emergency or what have you? Uh, that's above m my knowledge. Uh, but there it would be incentive to either live in the city or as close as possible to your location because then you're wasting your time and you're not getting any benefit that way. So I will vote for this one because I do want to congratulate and thank the firefighters for stepping up and offering the city something that we can use and I can hold my head up high in this negotiation. But I, I would rather have seen, one, a full discussion on residency prior to this, and two, uh, negotiations rego uh, regarding the overtime pay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. There is no further discussion. Chief, you want to speak? Suppose I'm making a thank you, thank you, Your Honor. I suppose I'm making a mistake since there is no firm, uh, further discussion to step up here. But there's a few things I really felt I need to clarify, and um, um, actually addressing Alderman Renflesh on on both of those issues. Um, one is I agree wholeheartedly with him regarding the call-in process, and there's some ambiguity as to how that process began and when it began. And we are looking to, through policy, address that outside of uh, the contract. And um, we're in the process of reforming our call-in process and looking at doing that in that manner. Uh, and also, just to clarify, that is um, utilized for emergency callback, which is something that we use very minimally over the course of the year, so there's not a lot of there's not big dollars attached to that at this time. We're talking hundreds of dollars differential, not thousands. But I do agree in principle that you are absolutely right that we need to address that and we are going to address that. Um, the second thing is um, regarding the residency portion of it. And I understand I've always been an advocate uh, uh, for residency. Um, 
And even though it may have some negative impact on the pool of candidates that you can draw, I always felt like, for maybe different reasons than Alderman Bourne and some of the rest of you, that it's important that our firefighters are residents of the community. And it's more for a tie into the community, familiarity with the community, um, the, the fact that they are a part of this, they're not coming here for their job and going back to a, a home somewhere else. They're committed to here and committed to the community and their volunteerism and everything else is here in the community. So when we looked at negotiating, uh, knowing that we had to negotiate and the union requesting to negotiate for um, the paramedic premiums that would be required, we wanted to put this together and move this forward so for everyone's planning purposes, we could uh, get this resolved and move on. At the, that was about the same time or, or very close to the time Alderman Boren brought his resolution forward. The reality is the comparables, and I know people hate to hear the word comparables, but that's the reality of what we deal with, are, are way stacked against us uh, imposing residency on our employees. There's a handful, one, two, or three cities in the state of Wisconsin uh, out of 50 some major cities that have city residency for their, any of their employees. And we have comparables on that that, was, that were presented to the Salary and Grievance Committee. So with that in mind and with the importance to us as a staff, and, it, and we are the staff and we are part of the negotiating committee with uh, Mr. Surik, and I do take a little offense to the uh, uh, implication that we're unable to negotiate on behalf of the city because that's my sworn responsibility as fire chief to fulfill the position that I'm in. We wanted to get residency in there. We're looking at hiring a number of employees, um, not 54 if you want you know, a humor in this as we heard earlier, but uh, the four that we, we uh, were approved by the council and whatever retirements that will be coming up, and my fear is even there will be no negotiating on residency until the next contract period, and we would lose an opportunity to, to have five, ten, or however many people we do end up hiring dependent on, on retirements as residents of the city in that meantime. And that's something that we felt was important, that we felt was really needed, and it was a step in the right direction to get those people in here. And that's what prompted us to include the residency in the discussion with the paramedics, uh, premiums, and the other things that were, were in the tentative agreement. Because we wanted to not lose that opportunity to get these new people into the city. And our hope is we get them in here, they move in from a different community, get their roots here, and then they stay. And, and I guess I just needed to clarify that and, and uh, the background on on how we got to that point. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, following the Chief's comments, I simply want to note one more thing before the vote. And that is, as I had sat in uh, salary and grievance conversations with the Chief last year and with the commander, I certainly know that they did uh, work quite well and distinctly to represent the city in a very objective way. And I was quite pleased with the work that they did. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I have to weigh in as well. And uh, with, or echoing uh, Alderman Manny's words, uh, Alderman Montemayor and myself sat in union negotiations last year as well. And we know how hard they work and, and what a process it is. And so going forward positively with this proposal is, is definitely a step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. And Ryan? 10 eyes, 5 no's. Motion carries. 1160 RC number 1790708.
by Public Works, who met and discussed RC number 126708 by the Motor Vehicle Committee's recommendation and concurs with all the committee's recommendations. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is there a motion and second under discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1161, RC number 180708 by Public Works, who met, and resolution number 31708 regarding the various costs and capabilities of the security cameras for city parks. The committee met and reviewed the following attached information and is recommending that the cost for installing such equipment be placed in the 2008 budget and have the department work with planning and development to secure potential block grant funding as well. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I wasn't able to attend the uh, committee meetings when this was uh, discussed. Uh, What's the total dollar, dollar figure that's going to be going into the 2008 budget? And then, of course, that'll be, we'll try to get some of that with the black rent funding. And uh, are, is this going to be in all the city parks? If you could just give me a little more information, please. Alderman Meyer. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, right now, we, we don't know the exact parks we're putting it into. It's going to the Park and Forestry Commission, and they will do a list as to the parks that are needed. And the exact cost of the cameras, that kind of vary from time to time. I think they're around 2000 apiece, if I'm not mistaken. But um, we'll have a further um, count as to the parks after it goes through Park and Forestry. OK. Thank you, Alvin Meyer. Vice President Warren. Thank you, Your Honor. So just to, just to follow up then, you do not have a definite figure yet on what you're going to be asking for in the 2008 budget? We, thank you, Alderman Bourne. We, we do have some, uh, some definite figures. Uh, Mr. Beeble will come up. Mr. Beeble. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, uh, what, what we did and we talked at the committee is we budgeted $15,000 in the 08 budget. That would be for three systems and three parks. Um, now in the budget, we, we put it in the budget, but yet we're still working with planning and development to secure block grant funding. We're gonna try to pick our three worst parks as, a, as an experimental um, trial period to see if this is really an effective deterrent. Um, it might only be one park. Um, so, but that was the figure that we used. It was 5,000 uh, per complete system per park. Uh, so that's what we're at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, that was uh, on the black grant funding. It looks like the parks that they're, they're eyeballing for this is probably uh, Sheridan Park, uh, King Park, and N Park, I believe. Of those, of those uh, two of the three, Sheridan and King Park, we believe will fall under black grant funding. Um, and according to Citizen Montemayor, he's thrown in Kiwanis Park too. So, Thank but no, it's a, it's a good thing if we can get black grant funding for it. I mean, to invest five thousand dollars to uh, cut down uh, crime and vandalism in a park is. is a good Thank thing. you. Thank you. And I know that uh, perhaps it wasn't said accurately, but if parks get cameras, it won't be our worst parks. We have no worst parks. All our parks are good. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I think uh, that statement was meant to be high crime parks, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for those who don't, who don't know, this has been going on for like two years. It's community of the whole, it's been in PPNS, it's been in public <coughs> works. I think we even talked about it in transit. <laughs> So we've been working on this for a long time, and it's, it's great that we're finally getting to the point where we're going to see a camera. Thank you. Alderman Gisha. Just a quick question. Who monitors the tapes and so forth for these cameras, and what, are the, what is that data to be used, and how? Alderman Bryan. You want to answer that, sir? Uh, I believe I believe the uh, setup is going to be where it's going to be hooked up to a network where it will feed into the computer system at the police department for, for monitoring. Um, 
Um, also, there's a possibility, depending on if there's not a proper feed, that there could be a 240-gig uh, uh, hard drive DVD on site where if there is an issue, it's after the fact. I mean, this is not going to be Big Brother watching people in the parks to go get them. Um, basically, it's, it's a, uh, a situation where if there is an issue in a park, we, we, we have it uh, uh, probably more easily resolved. So. Thank you, Commander Rand. Oliver Hassel. Thank you, Ron. I just wanted to reiterate, I think it's an excellent idea. There's a bit of a road to plow here, it seems, before we can actually get that equipment in there, but I hope everybody perseveres and we actually do get three parks, three sets of cameras, whatever it takes. Uh, and we invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in our parks, whether it be local or block grant money, and I think this is a small investment to protect that against vandalism or equipment, equipment issues. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. And there's two, two quick issues here that it, are they going to serve as a deterrent? That's one issue for me. The other issue is, will we be able to get any worthwhile information out of it? I mean, you see these documentaries of people getting stabbed and robbed at convenience stores, and their video system is shot. They can't, I mean, and this happened with Landmark Square Apartments, too, where they had a video system that cost a lot of money, and they can't get an accurate description or an identifiable description of the perpetrator or the alleged perpetrator. So. For us to invest money in a camera simply because we want to put a camera and it looks cool, I would not support that. Unless it's going to be able, to, we're, we're going to be able to retrieve and use the information in a good way that, that can be used as a follow-up. Otherwise, people were throwing money away. Now, I shouldn't have said that because now we got all the lights coming up. So, <laughs> President Hanna, I have to agree with you. Thank uh, you. When, when we sat on the school board, we went through this issue. And the quality of the camera is critical. Otherwise, it's a waste of money. You, you've got to go with a system where you can actually identify the perpetrators. Um, you know, we went through that with putting cameras at various uh, bicycle locations and that sort of thing. We found out the hard way. Uh, you can't. You, you can't do this on the cheap. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. And I, I agree with you also, and during the discussions, that's one thing I've said over and over again, that if, if we can't spend the money to get a decent camera to get a shot on who is it, it doesn't pay to do it. And, and I hope that during those discussions that the, the, uh, that the, the uh, people that work for us listen. So thank you. Thank you, Amon Vanderbilt. Okay. We have no further discussion. We will act on 1161. There is a motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1141, we've acted on. 1142, General Ordinance Number 370708 by Alderman Verhassel, Pontemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending Section 2975 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to delete and add the property appraiser to in the Assessor's Office Table of Organization. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Ann Vanderweel? 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1143, General Ordinance Number 380708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer amending Section 2975 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to delete and add the Director of Public Works in the Public Works Table of Organization. Alderman, Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could ask uh, Chairman Verhassel a question. I noticed that the uh, class grade goes from a 13 to a 15. Uh, am I to assume that that's to get uh, more qualified candidates or to increase the salary range to get candidates for the Director of Public Works? It's, that's why the pay grade is higher? I guess Paul and Paulette to respond a little bit to that, but yeah, it's been a long-standing discussion. It's somewhat of a housekeeping matter, Paulette, that we're putting the director, we're adding the director of public works to the public works TO. Okay, we don't, so that's not address it. Can, can the, I ask the, her? Qu the, the, question, the question is, the reason. are we doing that to secure a better qualified candidate? 
part of the reason. The other reason was is to keep everybody at an equal par, the, the department heads. A lot of them are already 15. Okay, thank you. Okay, do you need further explanation? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay, 11.43, we'll call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Aye. Ryan? Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhassel? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Working through the res uh, agenda here. 11.44, General Ordinance Number 3907.08. By Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending Section 2975 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to delete the current and create an updated position of mayoral administrative officer in the mayor's office table of organization. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Foran? Aye. Bauk? Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. excuse me, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Vanderweel, Verhassel, Aye. and Wangaman. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1145, General Ordinance Number 40708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Gisha, Heidemann, and Meyer, amending General Ordinance Number 330607. <coughs> Establishing the salaries of crossing guards. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1235 will be referred to City Plan Commission and Public Works. 1236 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 1237 will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 1238 will be referred to Finance. 1239 will be referred to Finance. Other matters, uh, Attorney McLean. 1240 is an ordinance amending section 2975 of the 1975 municipal code so as to change the tables of organization of city development department director of city development and engineering slant city engineer and that that one lies over 1241 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30 2008 and June 30 2009 and that one will be referred to law and licensing. As a matter of uh, public information, the council is now going to go into closed session. Uh, the council will uh, debate an issue and, and, and make a, a decision, and we will no longer come back live uh, after closing for closed session. President Hanna, I need a motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we go into closed session. Second. There's a motion and second. Do we read it all? Does he need to read it all? Uh, should be read. It should be read. Okay. <clears throat> the motion to convene in closed session under exemption provided in section 1985, Wisconsin statutes for the purchase purpose of deliberating the sale of land in the Sheboygan Business Center, where bargaining reasons require a closed session, and under the exemption provided in section 1985-1G, Wisconsin statutes for the purchase for the purpose of conferring with the city attorney who is rendering oral advice concerning the strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in Poole versus City of Sheboygan. Second. Thank you, President Haney. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We will go into closed session now. Ask that everyone leave except the council.